know me. Because when you know, because Meg know me and Kawi sister from back when the right. we but used to talk like this. I know her, but and then I I quit because I I didn't speak like this anymore. Hi, welcome to another lesson. I'm Kaki King. We are doing the surface changes today. That is a tune from a record that I make called The Neck is a Bridge to the Body. It also has a visual show that goes along with it. We will talk about that later. But um, here's some more of the song. So let's talk about the tuning we are in. Right now it is D sharp, A sharp, D sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. So basically this is open D sharp minor. I use this tuning a lot. I actually use open D minor, so it's a, a half step below. Um, the reason actually that this tuning is one whole step of, I'm sorry, one half step above a tuning that I've used often throughout the years is because I was making this album and the first half of the entire album is in open D minor and I wanted the sound to be a little bit different. So um, occasionally live I would use a capo to get a D sharp rather than a D. So you're not just like sitting in D minor the whole time. That's actually a tip I use a lot of times when if, you're, if you have a lot of music written in the same tuning but you're kind of just like everything starts to sound really samey, throw a capo on and you're suddenly, you can keep all the regular fingerings but you've changed your key and that can be really helpful just so you break it up a little bit. The story behind the title of The Surface Changes is, it's interesting to me, it's something that, um, it's part of a larger show that I worked on for a long time. Again, that show's called The Neck is a Bridge to the Body, so it's a show of really that's about the guitar. We have the neck, the bridge, the body of the guitar, I have my neck, I have my body, and it's this interesting show that um, just really examines the relationship between the, the player and the guitar. And so the surface changes visually when you see the song being played, um, the surface of the guitar is changing and you have different shapes and different um, visual content, like things from nature, animations, um, pictures, photographs, everything that kind of goes into making the surface of the guitar changing, um, but also taking on different forms. It's like a shapeshifter. So that's what the surface uh, changes means in the context of the record and the show. Um, but today we're just going to treat it as any old song that I've written. Um, and the thing I'd like to discuss is the use of this right hand percussion because in other lessons we've talked about percussion on the body of the guitar but it's been sort of playing more of a supporting role. This really takes a leading role here. So we're going to just, I'm going to play the left hand, I'm not going to worry about it yet, we are going to talk about it, but right now I'm just going to talk about what happens in the right hand. So the right hand is essentially doing two different types of drum beats. It's doing what I would, let's just refer to it as a bass drum and a snare. I mean, I think if you were playing a drum kit, that's where those sounds would be coming from. So for the bass drum sound, I'm using my thumb. And I'm using my thumb at, a, at a diff an interesting place on this particular guitar. All guitars are going to have different tops, different for, you know, woods, different bracing systems underneath the wood. So you're not always going to get the same sound. And I will you know, illustrate that on another guitar. But you're also not going to get the same sound with the top with this. You may have a guitar that you do not want to you know, scratch the finish on, in which case I encourage you to just watch this video and enjoy it. But for those of you who are willing to dig a little bit deeper, um, the way I'm getting this sound is obviously I have these giant fake nails, but even if you didn't have the nails, I can use my left hand as an example. You know, my fingers grouped together 
can get you a nice, a nice punchy kind of sound. So here we are, we're suddenly taking a drum set and fitting it into one hand. So how do we do this? So basically when you break these sounds up on your right hand, you want the thumb to sound loose and thumpy with very little attack. So I try to use the, the um, part of my thumb that's really soft. And then these fingers come down as a counter to that, and I want I do want to have some click or some attack, even if that would be the non-nail example. Now, if you listen to it, this is unchanging. So what's nice about this rhythm is that these fingers are always going to be coming down at the exact same interval the entire time. And I can change the bass, you know, the bass drum part on my thumb the way I want to. So that's the right hand. Let's examine the left hand. So it's pretty straightforward until you have this series of pull-offs at the end. Okay, so again, here's our tuning. Um, we're gonna start, and I always say this, but I refer to the strings in their standard tuning names, not the names of the notes we've tuned this to. So even though this is now a D sharp, I'm still gonna call it the E string. Okay, so I'm going to take my middle finger on the third fret of the E string, the low E, and my index finger is going to be on the second fret of the D string. So I'm going to hammer on the third fret first of the E string. And then all the way up here, I'm going to hold that hammer on and I'm going to hammer on the D string at the second fret with my index finger. So it's a nice seventh, major seventh interval there. And then pull off. So let's just look at that. take that same formation basically and move it down a string, meaning that I'm going to start on the A string and play the G string. So A at the third fret, G at the uh, second fret, and then back to the E and the D. And then this last thing, it's really pretty tricky, but I'm going to add the ring finger on the A string at the third fret and do a quick hammer on and pull off, and then pull off on the D string. So it's going to sound like this. So let's just practice that last little bit real quick. So remember, hammer on, pull off, and then pull off on the D string. And the reason I'm holding this here on the E string is because I've already made that note that to be ringing as well. So the full phrase would be back to the beginning. the right hand into this. Now at this point there's a lot happening in the left hand and a lot happening in the right hand. You know the thing to remember is that these hands are now having to just operate as their own thing. So what I suggest is practicing each thing very very separately and getting very good at it, getting muscle memory, and then slowly adding them together. So you don't have to do everything the right the right hand should be doing or everything the left hand is doing at the same time. You can add elements individually. What I would suggest is just starting with the fingers because they're very steady. So the fingers 
acting like a metronome here. Um, it's like your snare that just doesn't cease, it doesn't change, it doesn't have any kind of beat. It's always, like I said, on the two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two. I mean, if that's too much, you can also just do just one finger. encourage people to break down if you're trying to learn something whether it's this piece or anything else break it down into all the core components you know what's one finger doing at one time or what's one motion that I can practice until I'm ready to add the next one or the next finger or whatever it is I think it's a really good way to practice it's a really good way to tear exercises apart and understand what's happening inside of them um, you know I think it's it's not helpful to just try to do everything at once so let's try to add the thumb into this and the one thing that I noticed immediately is that the thumb and the fingers kind of, they, they hit in between these taps with the left hand. So for instance, so that's kind of a way that I would approach this is that I hit with the left hand and then I have one complete thumb fingers. Again with the left hand, thumb fingers. I would sort of think about, okay, how is this put together? We've got what I'm trying to illustrate to you with this particular piece in this song is that with the guitar and the right hand um, percussion, you can have a bass drum sound, you can have a snare sound, or you can have, you know, however you want to think about those sounds. You can have those going, and so you have you know your own little percussion section while still making you know quite a lot of noise with just the left hand. You know the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, the use of the open tuning, all of that's going to lead to you know making quite a lot of sound without actually writing a ton of music. Um, this can be applied in all kinds of ways. If I just start to sort of play around the neck. I encourage you to take this stuff into your own composition, whether it's, you know, just using a really simple backbeat. Or trying some more complex stuff. I'm done. <laughs> So now is the time that I take your questions off of this case, Twitter. Let's see, we have some very strange Twitter handles like the Unalaskan Bullworm. And who else do we have on here? We have Fiona's Octopus Hat. All right, that's a Fiona's Octopus's Hat or just the octopus that you wear on your head as a hat? Which one is it, Fiona? All right, so let's see. We have Mecham Borgum, um, who I take it's not from Indiana. Uh, no, let's see. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have um, we have Meekin Owen, who has put in a question saying, how do you switch between your tunings? How do you keep all the tunings straight? Well, that's an interesting question. That's kind of a two-parter. Um, but I can definitely show you the way that I trick my mind into being able to switch from tunings easily. So I'm going to start in standard tuning, everyone's favorite, except me. So we're going to go from E, A, D, what is it, G, B, E, what's standard tuning? You can just say we're going to go from standard <laughs> tuning to... Grab All right, bag grab, grab bag. Bad dad. 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 
Dad Gad. it. <laughs> We're gonna go from standard tuning to Dad Gad, D A D G A D. So the E is gonna go down to a D. The A stays the same. The D stays the same. The G stays the same. B changes to an A. E changes to a D. So what I like to do, okay, so let's talk about what do I already have on the fretboard, sorry, what do I already have in the tuning that can help me reference the new tuning? So I have this D, right? That's the third string. So my first string needs to be a D, D, A, D, G, A, D. So I can use the octave sound to get to that really quickly. So then, this string is an A, and when I do G, A, D, D, A, D, G, A, D, that B string becomes an A. So here I've got my A. So I use the octaves. Octaves are really, really helpful in this regard. Then I have, what do I have left? I got D, A, D, G, A, D. So I have this E string that needs to tune to a D. So I already now have two Ds. I have this one. your answer, Megan Morgan. I can't remember what your name was on Twitter, but thank you for submitting your question. So that's the surface changes. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Um, please, if you have any questions, get at me on Twitter, at Khaki King. I've got my Facebook. I've got Instagram. I've got whatever. Just, you know, take a photo of your guitar and say, what, what's, what's going on here? And I'll uh, do my best to get back to you. Or if you just have another uh, request about what I should be doing in the future. Um, thank you for watching. See you again soon.